I might have just created something very similar to an NAN cursor for the code node. As you can see in the input side, all I have is a trigger node that has two objects. These two objects are just name and code. The name is a string and the code is a number. Now inside of this chat, I'm going to send over some plus five to the code value of each object. As soon as I send that in, it starts identifying what it has of input, what is inside of the JavaScript field, places in whatever is needed to apply that sum, verifies inside of the output if that was successfully achieved and then outputs a goal achieved successfully message. This was fully automated. It had access to whatever was inside of the JavaScript field, clicked the execute step, watched whatever was updated inside of the output field. And if the JavaScript code it suggested was incorrect, it would keep trying to find the correct code until either it finds it or it reaches the max attempts, which we could toggle manually. This extension is free and available in the description of this video. But before anything else, it's a work in progress. Because if you use NAN, you understand that you're not going to be using just the input or the output, you'll also be using other nodes. This is just a test workflow, but if I go over to the last node, you'll notice that the dropdown shows the result of the past nodes. But the AI agent node won't have access to these. I still haven't implemented a way for it to toggle this, find whatever it was executed in that specific node. So the way that it currently does that is by testing that node. So for example, I can find whatever data is inside of the trigger node if I just return it right here. So if I execute this step, I see everything that's inside of that specific node. And this is what the AI will do to understand what's inside of that node and then use that data to come up with whatever code it needs to. So let me go back to the dummy data, execute this, toggle the AI code assistant, pen the trigger node objects with the input objects. And that is it. It found the obvious code of merging everything together. It had access to that trigger node and it will only have access to that if you specify its name or if you give it a clear example inside of the JavaScript input. Some other things that would be pretty interesting to add to this AI agent is the ability of using these special vars method that is specific to NAN. So for example, if I wanted to access the number one from the first object in the trigger node, I would use dot first. And then if you just look at this and don't understand how this data is used inside of NAN, you would just naturally place in dot code. But you have to add a dot JSON and after this dot JSON add the actual dot code. And that's actually how you'll get access to the number one. This is all described inside of the system prompt for this agent, but there's a lot more that could be added for a specific NAN structure. And this is something specific to the code node because I feel like NAN is an awesome platform, but most of the times you'll be dealing with a lot of data structures. And for non-technical people, sometimes they'll have to rely on going to to the input field, grabbing everything there, going over to cloud, sending that there, and then getting that JavaScript code, sending it back here. So instead of doing all that, let's let an AI agent solve all this for us. This way we could just chat it out and ask for whatever we want to and actually make the system almost completely no code. And maybe you clicked on the video thinking that this would be an AI agent that I could type something in and it would pop a node inside of the workflow. Well, the good news is that yes, this is totally possible. And we could even use the NAN API to do this since their API has a way to retrieve executions. And by retrieving those specific executions, you'll be able to give the LLM a context of what's going on in each execution, what might be there. You can add a function for the AI agent to fetch for the entire workflow anytime that it needs to find that specific JSON structure. And finally, when it comes up with a solution, it can update that workflow. An example of how we're getting close to this is a recent video from Jack Roberts, where he shows how through a specific prompt he uses in Claude, we're able to retrieve an entire NAN JSON that just by pasting it over in the workflow, everything is already set. So honestly, it's just a matter of time for either NAN to implement something like this or for an independent developer to just build this out. Now, let me show you how to install this and all the features that it has so you can either continue building on with it or just use it at its maximum potential. When you download this, it will be a .zip at which you should extract to your own computer. After you're done extracting, just go over to your extensions. It's right over here. So just click on the extensions button, click on manage extensions, and that will open up. If you don't have your developer mode checked on, toggle that on and go over to load unpack. Now you just have to find that specific folder 
open it up and you'll see basically this. Click on select folder and it will be installed in your Chrome browser. After that, head back to your NAN workflow, just F5 to refresh so it applies the actual extension. Open up any code node and this only works for code node. So you'll see this button right here below the code node. Click that and then this will pop out. The first time you use this, you have to insert your credentials for the LLM you're using. Since I'm using Open Router, you can choose from any LLM that you want to use. So just click on open settings. This will show up. Let me delete mine so I can do this from the beginning. You can just head over to this link, click on create API key. Let me place in something like NAN AI agent, hit create, and your API key will be shown right here at which you could just copy it, go back to the settings, place that in there. Now for the model, you can go with the default OpenAI GPT-40 mini. This is pretty cheap. The results with it are honestly pretty good. But if you want a different model, you can come over to the rankings from Open Router. Let's choose Claude Sonnet 4. Just copy this right here. Go over there and paste it in there. Make sure to test the connection to see if it's working well. It'll use your API along with the model to see if everything is all set. Then just click on save settings and you should be good to go. There are just other two buttons up here. One is for detecting what is the input and the output just to ensure that it's tracking the right things. And the other one is just for you to start a new conversation with the AI agent. Aside from that, you can just talk inside of the chat. Let me sum the two, actually sum all the values of code. So I'm not being specific at all here. Let's see if it understands that there are code values and these values are integers. Yeah, <laughs> pretty easy for it. So it summed everything up and the sum of it was 13. Goal achieved successfully, pretty easy. So this is an AI agent, but different from using tools or executing functions, it's going through this validation right here. Since the only things it needs to do is identify if the goal was achieved, generate a code and identify when the goal is basically impossible. Developer wise, this is kind of nasty because it's just a bunch of if else, but it's a better solution than the first one that cursor came up with, which was basically a loop that performed an API fetch to the LLM and then it verified if it was done, but then the loop always continued. So for example, if I defined up here, and this is the place where you can define the maximum executions, if I define like 10 executions, it would always run 10 times and always fetch 10 times uh, for the LLM uh, API fetch. So yeah, this is yet another project that was completely built inside of Cursor. I can't say that this is the type of project that whoever doesn't know how to code at least a little bit would have been able to build. But honestly, with core concepts, you would have been able to build this just fine. And that's what the focus of the AI Forge community is. I have an entire code concepts course where I illustrate what is an API, for example. I try to explain the different HTTP methods like get, post, put, delete. And these are all basic things that come in pretty handy when you try to create a little bit more complex tools inside of Cursor AI. So feel free to check it out as well as the extension. And if you run into any issues or even awesome results, please share with us down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.